How many people on the Zoom? We know, right? We have 11 men. Oh, well. Let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Welcome everyone to this special meeting of the Board of Supervisors and presentation and consideration of the Dawson Township Parks and Recreation Community Center. Um, we have a presentation again from MKSD, our architects, and um, Ken Ballard from Ballard King, our consultant on um, the feasibility of such a project. There are three questions we have to answer tonight, and it's our task as the Board of Supervisors to answer these questions. Number one, are we going to build a community center? Number two, if we're going to build it, where are we going to put it? Number three, what will, what, what, what will the building look like? What, what size will it be? What rooms will it have? Of course, we're not going to get to the uh, last two questions unless we answer the first one. So that is what we have to do tonight. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn uh, the introductions over to Sylvia to introduce her team. Thank you, Barbara. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone after working on this study for the last year. It's been an interesting process for us because we haven't really done any in-person meetings and we wondered how that would really challenge us. But I'm happy to say that the committee was very committed to getting the study done and getting all the feedback and all the meetings happened. And uh, I think the results, I hope that you'll be happy with them and we can uh, make some of those decisions tonight. So to introduce myself, I'm Sylvia Hoffman, a founding partner of MKSD Architects. I have 25 years of experience in designing recreation facilities. Uh, with me tonight, I also have um, Ryan Kennedy. Ryan is an architect in, in our office and also a project manager, senior project manager and associate with our firm. Megan Henry is a project designer and she specializes also in sustainability uh, design, which will be a good portion of this presentation. We also have Ken Ballard, who's our feasibility uh, consultant, um, joining us from Colorado tonight, and um, Kevin Buxton, who is the project engineer from HB Engineers. So to go over the agenda for this evening, um, Brian's going to handle the project timeline and explain to you where we are in the process and where we go from here tonight. We're going to talk to you about the site selection as well as that site has changed from the last time uh, the earlier on in the study. Then we're going to just briefly review the schematic plan options that were presented last time just to refresh everybody's memory and then respond to the comments that we had from that meeting with the fourth option. Um, we'll also talk about the exterior design. Uh, just as Barbara mentioned, what is this building going to look like? And so we'll present that tonight. Um, Megan is going to review the sustainability features of the building and then we'll have our conclusion and happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. So we'll turn it over to Ryan to go through the project timeline. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, so this is the project timeline that we presented last time uh, with a few updates. So this project started in January, February of 2021 is where we did the research and data collection. We met with a lot of groups um, in the township, the administration, all the Board of Supervisors, and a lot of the youth groups as well. Um, we had a public meeting in February of 2021 where we shared a lot of ideas and we got a lot of feedback. Uh, phase two of this project, the feasibility study, was the uh, facility program and programming analysis. What you'll see tonight in the floor plans and the renderings, a lot of what came out of that um, program analysis. Uh, our first presentation to the public was in mid-June. Um, and since then, we've been doing a lot of conceptual design of the building, the floor plans, the renderings um, since then. And that takes us to tonight um, with the feasibility findings and possible board authorization. If we are authorized to move forward, 
we would roll into design development um, and the construction documents, which would be around four months uh, in duration, where we have another public presentation uh, to show you the progress that we've been making. And then after that, if the board authorizes us to move forward, we'd go through bidding and construction administration. Um, so in total, um, you're looking at about a year and a half, uh, 18 months. So we'll go on to the site selection, which will be from Megan. Thanks, Ryan. So two site options for the community center were looked at. So Newton, New Britain Road was the first one that we started looking at. And the second one was the court's location. Can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. So the building committee developed a list of comparisons of the two locations for us to take a look at. So the New Britain Road, you can see there is a lack of utilities. It's far from the recreation offices as well as public works. There's a lack of adequate parking in that area. The site will require a retaining wall due to the existing conditions of the site. There will be a loss of a field to accommodate parking in that area. And there's a, concerned, uh, a concern for the view shed by the EAC as well as some of the neighbors. At the court location, there's utilities and it's easily accessible. So there's water and sewer, et cetera. It's close to the park and other offices, and as well as the public works. There is additional parking that can be accommodated from some of the existing facilities here. The, re the relocation of court space is available, so we will show you a map of the proposed court location. And you will lose field one to accommodate those new courts. So if you go to the next slide. So this is a proposed site plan at the court's location. So based on the comparisons, um, this was the best site option. So the courts will be relocated to the adjacent field. And you can see at the courts location is where we have the proposed community center with parking towards the front. And on the right hand side is the existing municipal building. Uh, next, I'm gonna turn it back over to Sylvia to talk through our building study. Just want to refresh everybody's memory as far as you know what were the goals of this study, and really it will be the yardstick that we use to measure you know our success with this process. So obviously the first and foremost goal was to create a plan that supports a multi-use recreation programming, and you'll see that a little bit later in the presentation. How many types of programs and how this building can be used, the variety of uh, functions that you can have in that in that space in that building. We also need to respond to the market analysis to make sure that this building will be used in the area that it's being put. Um, and Ken will address that with the study that's, that he's done uh, during the last year. We also want to address the input of the residents, the building committee, the board of supervisors, all of the stakeholders. Uh, we've had many meetings over the last year, a lot of really great input from everyone, very committed to making this the best building that it can be. And we want to make sure everybody's thoughts are heard during this process. Um, and we also want to develop a program and a building that balances the value, the cost, and the sustainability issues and initiatives that the township has in place. So this building should really address all of those things relatively equally. And we want to align the goals of Ready for 100. So our goal will be to provide an HVAC building system for heating and cooling that can adapt in the future to meet the sustainability resolution. So we'll talk about that um, as well. So we're gonna go into the floor plans and I'll just briefly go over the three that were presented from the last time. So again, just to refresh everybody's memory. And then the fourth option will be the floor plan that takes into consideration all of the comments that were made and um, suggestions from the last uh, meeting. So this is option one. It's uh, kind of uh, the smallest uh, footprint of all of the plans. Um, this option has no gymnasium and really just has multi-purpose rooms. So to guide you uh, through the plan, uh, just to the south of the building footprint is the parking and the entrance is centered on the building. So as you walk in, you'll be entering into a lobby space with a reception desk so someone can greet you and you have some visibility to a person, and then there'll be a small office directly behind that uh, reception area. 
And then to the right and left of that central lobby are two large multipurpose rooms. These multipurpose rooms can be broken down with movable walls, so you have quite a bit of flexibility depending on what kind of function is happening in that space, and you can divide those spaces up. Um, they'll also have, as we get further into the process, uh, the finishes will be able to accommodate a variety of uses, um, whether you're having um, a party or you're having an athletic event, those are two different kind of spaces, so we want to make sure that that's addressed within these two spaces. We're also providing a warming kitchen that opens onto one of the multi-use spaces and into the hallway, so if someone needs um, some food, a small catering kitchen will be available. There's also just some very basic um, support spaces throughout the building, toilet rooms, storage, data, janitor's closet, and three small multi-use rooms in the top right-hand corner of the plan. We also included uh, two toilet rooms that are accessed from the outside of the building so that if people are in the park area, they can come up to the building and use either one of those toilet rooms without having to go into the building. So although there's no gym shown on this plan, there is an outline for a future gym. If this option would be selected, that could be accommodated uh, relatively easily on the site and we've kept some open areas in the white circulation hallways that would allow you to connect to that gym. So this square footage is just under 12,000 square feet and there's some of the other uh, project costs listed there but I'll save that detailed information for Ken um, and Ryan to explain a couple slides after the floor plans. Uh, next slide. So option number two, um, reduces the number of multi-purpose rooms down to one large multi-purpose room that can be divided into two, and it adds the gymnasium back into the program. You can see that in the peach color. Now, a small gymnasium is 60, roughly 6,500 square feet, and that's the footprint that's shown on this plan, but the dashed line around that would be a larger gym of 8,000 square feet. Basically, what you're getting with the larger gym is more spectator space, around the perimeter of the building and another volleyball court. So that, that's about 1,500 square feet more in order to accommodate that. Um, again, we'd have storage space, a kitchenette, an office and a lobby, all the same features that you saw in the previous plan. This building square footage gets bu bumped up to 14,000 in order to accommodate all of those program elements and there's still space around the building to expand in the future. As you can see to the right of the gymnasium, you could add on another gym or other multi-purpose spaces as you see in the future. The additional cost for that gym also is noted there, just 444,000 square feet for the extra space for the larger gym. And then option number three. Um, option number three basically marries option number one and two together. So it has the original footprint of the two multipurpose rooms, the larger multipurpose rooms, again, able to divide those spaces. Um, it has the same lobby configuration, the office, all of the storage spaces, and it has the larger gym, which is just shy of 8,000 square feet. So this really boosts our square footage up a, a bit, just over 20,000. So it's the largest, obviously, of all of the plans. Um, but all the amenities are the same, still have the toilet rooms accessible from the outside, et cetera. Okay. So now we're on to option four, which we're calling the hybrid option, which is the one that takes into consideration the comments that were made from the last meeting. So again, the, the plan is laid out very similar to the other plans. Entrance in the center, We've tucked a vestibule in kind of off to the side to make the lobby a little more usable, a welcome desk, office, um, multi-use spaces with storage adjacent to each of the rooms, and this is the smaller gymnasium. So that building footprint is just shy of 19,000, so a little smaller than the last one, so you are reali realizing some savings. One of the features that we also developed, and you'll see this in the renderings as well, is the outdoor covered space that's just uh, to the right of the multi-purpose room. So basically what we're doing is just extending the framing of the building um, to the right of the, of the multi-purpose room and creating a covered space that could be used on its own 
or in conjunction with that multi-purpose room. And that's a really great value uh, to add that to this building. So we feel that could be something that would be a nice benefit and, and very cost effective. Okay, so I think, is Ken uh, with us? Ballard, is he joining us via Zoom? He is supposed to be joining okay. us. You have um, Mr. Ba Mr. Uh, yep, there he is. I can. We can't hear him, Aaron. Not yet. Ken. Please bear with us for a moment while we get our technical difficulties situated here. Kevin, are you there? We I am here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear Kevin. Yeah, okay. Ken, can we hear you? Can you hear me? This is Yes. 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 Okay, good. Thank you. I suspect our volume is turned down. Yeah. They were talking about we couldn't hear them because he's valuable. Okay. Okay, Ken, if you want, if you have that slide up on your screen. For the I summary do. of options, okay. Um, you want to go through the operating uh, expenses, and I guess we can't split the screen to see both. Um, it's on the screen behind. Oh, it's on this one. Okay, great. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, can, if you can hear me now, it's um, what we did is you saw the summaries on each of the building options uh, for the operations plan, but we developed. Uh, detailed operating plans for each of the four options and actually for kind of this new 2.5 option that we talked about with the larger gym. Uh, we did that utilizing the um, current operating structure for recreation and uh, built a model that looks at uh, costs associated with uh, staffing the facility as well as um, providing um, uh, all the programs and services there and the costs of those as well as the revenue that would come from use of the facility as well as from the programs and services. So, um, you know, we look at the last three columns on this page and it looks at what your estimated operating expenses. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. yep. <laughs> so it, it has the operating expenses uh, down the first column that again identifies everything from staffing to utility costs to uh, operating supplies to programs and services that will be offered there. We have the, op the operating revenue again that's associated with utilization of the facility, heavily uh, programmed facility, rentals and other sources of program revenue that are associated with that as well. Then we have kind of in the last column the estimated recovery percentage and it's basically uh, just dividing um, operating uh, revenues by expenses. And you can see that in most of the options, uh, the, ex the operating costs exceed um, the revenues, or, excuse me, the revenues exceed the operating costs with the exception of option two, uh, which has a little bit of smaller gym and also has a pretty small uh, multi-purpose room space in there. And it's just slightly to the negative uh, by a, a few thousand dollars. So. Um, this is designed to give you an idea of what it's going to cost to maintain and operate these 
uh, different facility options. And actually, if you look at this, uh, the option three, the largest has the best cost recovery percentage, uh, followed by uh, the hybrid option number four, uh, that, that's in the, the second uh, kind of place, if you will, in terms of overall cost recovery. Okay. So one of the questions that we had at the last meeting was if we were to build an additional gym in the future, what does that cost escalation look like? How much more is it going to cost us in the future? So Ryan did an analysis of that, so I'll have him um, explain that. Thank you. So as you saw in all four options, um, we have a dashed area where we're calling a future expansion, future gymnasium. So if down the road um, you foresee the need for additional rental space or um, uh, gymnasium space, that could be accomplished. So um, the board at last time asked us to look at what is the cost of a gymnasium 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. So the first, the top portion of the screen is for a small gymnasium, which is around 6,500 square feet. And as Sylvia said, there's le less spectator area and there's one less volleyball court. So I'm not gonna go through all these numbers, but if you look at the first line, which is, you know, let's call it your, your zero building in 2022, your unit cost is about $250 a square foot and your total cost is about 2.2 million. Um, looking 10 years down the road, your total cost is about 3.5 million, and looking 20 years down the road, it's about 5.3 million. All this assumes uh, an escalation percentage of about 4.5%, which is pretty steady for the last 10 years. The lower half of this <clears throat> slide is a large gymnasium, which is about 8,000 square feet, and you saw this in option three, um, so in today's dollars, building next year, you're looking at about $2.7 million. In 10 years, you're looking at about $4.2 million. And in 20 years, it's about $6.6 .6 million. So the next slide, I'd like to turn over to Supervisor Lyons to talk about the potential of what could go in this building. Okay, Karen and I did a, an exercise, and that's what this is. It's a it's a, you know, a, a facsimile of what programs could be held in the various size rooms that are pictured here on this diagram. And there's lots of different kinds of programs. Doesn't mean that any one of these programs will be indeed held in, as um, programs in Doylestown Township, but it shows the, uh, by example, what kinds of things can be held in a, in a multi-purpose room that's 2,900 square feet as opposed to a multi-use room that's 1,000 square feet and what could be used um, and held in a gymnasium of 6,300 6, square feet. So the purpose of this exercise was for illustration only, so that we can see the variety of things that we can do with a building of this size. Now, you don't, we don't have any particular option building here. It's just a small gym and a couple multi-purpose rooms. So just for illustrative purposes only. And I thought it was a good exercise so we could see the variety and the types of things that we can offer to our, our residents going into a, a facility such as this. Does anybody have any questions about this? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So the next part of our presentation is going to focus on what the exterior of this building is going to look like. Now you've seen multiple plans. Um, even though some of those plans vary uh, from one to the other a little bit, essentially the character of the building, I think, um, could remain relatively the same. Yeah, let me have that. Okay. So the first step that we took in uh, trying to figure out what this building would look like is just the process of looking at the buildings around it, and particularly this one. It's a very important building to a community, a municipal building. And we wanted to make sure that the new building didn't look out of place, you know, adjacent to this building. They should relate to one another. Now, the functions are very different, so we don't want them to look the same, but we want them to have some characteristics and some features that are similar. So this is the outside of the building that we're in now. You're all familiar with it. Uh, very nice architecture. Uh, lots of stone. Uh, you have the standing seam uh, red metal roofs that are very iconic to the building. You have the gray tones. Uh, you have the stone framed entry right at the front door. 
Uh, so we picked up on some of these cues as we were designing uh, the building. So the other thing I want to remind everyone is a decision was made to uh, utilize a uh, what's called a prefab type of building. And that's you know, a very economical uh, approach to a building of this type. It's appropriate for this type because you have very wide spans and very tall spaces on the inside, which you need for gymnasiums and multi-purpose rooms. So I think it's a very appropriate use. So the question was, can we really make it look attractive and make sure that it has the finishes that we like and still balance the cost? So the first image that you're seeing on the screen is an aerial view of what this building could look like on the site that you have here. And that's a real photograph of your site. So just to orient everybody, um, Kids Castle is out uh, to, the, to the left of the new building, and then the municipal building is to the right of us. And you can see the forms of the multi-purpose uh, wing of the building, and then also the form of the gymnasium to the back. So we also felt it was important that this wasn't just one giant mass of a building, that it was broken down so the scale is a little more approachable and fits in with the site. And you can start to see some of the details that we picked up from the uh, municipal building. So the building is right up against the parking access, so very easy to get to. The entrance is at the center of the building, and we use that similar detail on your township building on the front of this building. So there's a framed arch uh, stone around the front door and um, basically uh, a little seating ledge right across that area as well. You can start to see some of the colors. We had some fun with this. It's a recreation building, so it should have some fun features and fun colors. You can do, do things here that maybe you wouldn't do on a municipal building or other type of building. So you can see that we took the red color and we actually pulled it across the metal roof here just to kind of give it some life and some interest as well. Let me, let me just open the computer to go to the next slide since it's not cooperating. Can you advance it? This is why we don't let you out of the back yeah. end. Let me see if I can go back. No. Can't go back or front. Is that our device? Mm -hmm. And the clip of the tape. We're stuck. We had it running earlier, so it was working. Well, it doesn't mean it's always going to work. Yeah, this one's not going to work. It's stuck too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> Having a beer over there? There you go. Oh, there we go. Thank you. I hate when that happens, right? Um, okay, so let's look at another view of what this building uh, would look like. So this is basically from the south uh, east corner looking back towards the building. So as I mentioned, this is the entranceway, and you have some of that uh, stone detailing across the front. This overhang also offers some protection at the front door and shading because this building does face south. So you're going to get a lot of natural light into that building you know, on a daily basis. So we want to make sure that the front door where there is a lot of glass, because you want some transparency and visibility to the parking lot, gets shade. And that um, brings me to kind of these uh, little detail that we've created over the um, windows that look into the multi-purpose room. You know, what we've done basically is extend the roof to create an overhang. And then we've put a vertical mesh in front of those windows. And that mesh acts as a sunscreen to uh, just stop the direct uh, sunlight from coming into those spaces. You still have a nice view out, but uh, you're blocking the harsh uh, light from the sun. 
Um, so to the right of the, the edge of the building here, you'll see the overhang and the outdoor space that I was talking about when I was reviewing the plan. We have basically just extended the roof and one structural frame to create this really great outdoor space. And we wanted to put a screen on that so that as people are you know, using that space and there's people who are parking or walking, you do have a little bit of privacy with that screen, but you're still getting ventilation, you're still getting natural light and air. And that also kind of creates an opportunity for us to brand the building with some neat colors, the name. Um, here it's uh, Doylestown Parks and Rec Community Center. It could really be anything that we want it to be. So this is uh, one option for what, what the building could look like. Oh, it worked good. Okay, so here's uh, a view from the southwest uh, side, just basically right on the, on the opposite corner of the building. And again, you see some of the details of the red screens uh, coming down. Now, those red screens don't go all the way to the ground. What we suggested is that they actually stop on a type of a low seating wall so that as people are walking or um, you know, they're waiting for someone, you actually have a little opportunity to create a little bench outside of the building. So that would be like right here and here. Okay, so then another view. This is actually from standing at the north uh, west corner looking towards the mass of the gym. You can see that um, this also works well because the mass of the gym is larger. Obviously, it's taller. So you want to accommodate <laughs> volleyball and basketball in that space. But it's to the back of the, of the complex, so that mass of the building you know, is not in your face and at the front door as you're walking in. So um, the mass of the gym is this area here. And then this is um, a small uh, flat roof space in between that will have some of our mechanical equipment on it. And then this is the multi-purpose room um, area. Somebody's engine's okay. running. <laughs> the alarm. Oh, did we miss that? Did it not go through? It's not you, Sylvia. Okay. All right. So thank you, Megan, for pointing out that we actually missed a slide. There was a question at uh, one of our meetings that can we make the siding beige and to match this building? So that's what you're seeing on the screen here. They, they look very similar, but you can see uh, that's the beige and then that's the gray. So those are two color options that are available for us to uh, incorporate. Um, does anybody have any questions as we're going through? Are those screens movable? I know you probably told me this before, but those screens, are, do, do they stay there permanently or are they Yes, movable? they would stay permanently. Yeah, they're a permanent part of the building. They, and they are rust-resistant screens? Yep, okay. yeah. It's really the same material that you would use for your roofing. <laughs> it's just that it's perforated. So again, just here's that side view from um, the west. And then just to pull back on the aerial view again, now that you're all oriented and, and understand how the building is laid out, just to um, remind you what, what that looks like from an aerial view. Okay. Okay, now Megan is going to handle her, her sustainability section of the <coughs> presentation. I'll just, I'll click it just in case. <laughs> All right, so one of the main goals of the community center was to integrate sustainable initiatives. So the first thing we did was we took a look at what Doylestown is already doing. So some of the current um, accolades are you have the Environmental Advisory Council. There you have achieved some certifications and awards. There are per, uh, power purchase agreements. There's the Green Points program. So this encourages uh, new commercial buildings to be built to lead standards. And then there's also the Ready for 100. So based on feedback from the board and community members, we took some time to research this and think about how we can apply these to the new building as we move forward. So just to take a look at the timeline of where we're at versus the future is today or the Ready for 100 resolution. 2035 is 100% clean and renewable electricity and then 2050 is the 100% clean and renewable energy for heat and transportation. So we want to look at this and think of where we are today 
and make sure that the decisions that we're making allow for the building to adapt and change as we move towards these goals. So as I mentioned before, you have the current ordinance that encourages commercial buildings to achieve LEED. So we took that opportunity to look at the LEED action items that we could apply to this building as we're designing. So LEED is broken down into six categories. So I just have a couple slides pointing out each category and some of the items that we felt would be easily achievable by the township. And we can also use these as decision makers as we're moving through the process of designing the building. So the first one is location and transportation. So obviously the site at the courts is previously developed, which is really great for LEED because we're not disrupting any current vegetation. So we're using a site that's already been um, disrupted. It's also located near public transit and your bike path system and your other tra uh, trail system. And it's located near diverse uses. So some other items is we could provide bike storage. We can look at minimize parking and then we can also provide electric vehicle parking spaces. And some of these things we can achieve now, and some of them we can keep in mind for the future. Maybe it's done in the next five years, 10 years, et cetera. And for the sustainable sites, is the idea is to maintain and restore vegetated areas. So again, by using a site that's already been um, utilized, we're minimizing that. We could also look into vegetated roofs, rainwater collection, as well as reducing the heat island. So that can be something as simple as the roof material that we're using or the paving that we're using on the project. The next two are water efficiency and energy and atmosphere. So for water, it can be making sure we're using plants that are native to the area or maybe don't require a lot of water irrigation. It can be use, using Energy Star appliances, so especially in the kitchen area, making sure that we're specifying um, green appliances in there. Utilize water sense fixtures, so low flow toilets are pretty common nowadays. And then we can also look at installing water meters for all of those fixtures so that you can actually monitor how much water is being used by the building. For energy and atmosphere, you're already purchasing some offsite renewable energy through the power purchase agreements, and that's something that can be done into the future. You can also install metering for the energy systems, so for the HVAC, the electricity, to see how much is being used. We can also design to higher than code. So a lot of the LEED standards today that we're looking at have been incorporated into the latest building code. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind that some of the stuff we have to do, but we can also design for better than that. And then the last one is solar panels. So that's something, again, that can be looked at now or in the future. And the last two are materials and resources and indoor air quality. So for materials, as we're going through and picking what kind of carpet we want to use, we can look at things of like where it's coming from, how it's being delivered to the site to lower the impact on the environment, as well as minim excuse me, minimizing the waste generated throughout construction and demolition. And then for indoor air quality, we can make sure that we have, like, in this building, a vestibule, which helps minimize the amount of contaminants entering and exiting the building. <laughs> Selecting products that have low VOCs, so make sure that the products that we're using aren't releasing gases that might be harmful or toxic into the environment. And then Kevin is working with us at HBE Engineers to develop the mechanical systems to code or higher and increase sound transmission class ratings. So we want to make sure that the spaces are comfortable to be in and that sound is absorbed and not transferred. So if you're in a multi-purpose room next to another one, there's not a lot of crossover in the acoustics. And I'm going to turn it back to Sylvia. OK, that really concludes our part of the presentation, the formal part. We're very happy to answer any questions that you have. I just really want to thank everyone who's been involved in the project. There's been so much commitment from all of the stakeholders, and uh, it's been an exciting project to work on. Even in the last year and a half, when things have been so tough with COVID and gathering and everything else, I'm excited about this because it gives you faith that things are going to go back to normal. We'll be going back inside. We'll be doing 
activities inside and gathering, which is so important to a community. Even just driving up here tonight and seeing everyone outside with the dog agility classes and all the kids playing tennis, and it was really great. So I think the community is going to really appreciate this building. And we're, we're happy to take any questions that you have and uh, help you along in this process. Thanks. Before we take questions regarding the buildings and the options and everything, I would like the board to consider this vote. We, it, it last uh, 2020, we made the decision to hire these folks and to do what they've done. They've done what we asked them to do very well. And um, we never did vote that we were going to build this thing. And I think before we do anything further tonight, we have to decide by a vote of the Board of Supervisors whether we are indeed going to build a, a, uh, a recreation center, a community recreation center. And I'll, t I'll um, entertain a motion to that effect. I'll make a motion that we move forward with building a community recreation center. Is there a second? I'll second that, um, although I have a few questions to ask, but I would say About second. whether we're going to build one? No, not about whether we're going to build one. No, this is just so we can move forward to the in question. In terms of moving forward with a rec center? Yes. A form Are we going to do it or not? Yes. Okay, that's, that's your second. Any uh, concerns, considerations, questions? Anybody out there have anything to say before we call the question? Can you go to the microphone, Ann? You're asking taxpayers and residents to fund millions more dollars for a project that I'm not convinced we need. But I'm not on the board. I'm just asking you to please really think hard while you're still paying for this that went way over, that these numbers that were given tonight, you know, are just bottom numbers. It's all going to go over. It'll be more than that. You're asking residents to pay for the building, pay to use the building, and then pay for the maintenance and staffing and everything else forever. So it's a big question. It's a big question. Please consider carefully before you just willy-nilly vote for up to $8 million more money for a project that there's facilities in our, in our township and our community already that cover all these things. Just ask you. Thanks, Ann. And that was the point of the fe feasibility study. So we, we know the results of that study. And it is also something, as everybody knows, it's been um, in the plan since the 1990s that we have a community center. And it was brought to, you know, in, in our face in 2018 when we lost the one building that housed our program. So here we are faced with no kind of um, building. So it's a very difficult decision. We know the cost is, is something that's going to be hard to bear. We, we, uh, you know, that's another question, but we're, we're, we're cognizant of the costs and we're also cognizant of sometimes uh, some kinds of fundraising and grants that we might be able to achieve to help defray some of these costs and um, long-term long fiscal planning on it. But uh, we realize that. <laughs> Thank you, Ann Woodbury. Uh, Kali Mullen, I'm a resident and um, member of Ways and Means Committee. I just want to agree with Ann. I feel like putting a motion to build a building without making decisions on what that building will be is putting the cart before the horse. I think it's premature, and I don't think it's responsible. Okay, thank you. Um, we're not making a decision on what necessarily the building is going to look like or how big, big, big it is. That's the second question. The question is whether we're going to build one at all. And there's a motion and a second. Any other considerations? Come up to the microphone, Ann Woodbury. Sorry, I know he's taking notes, but could I ask that in light that we that we table this until this building's actually paid off and then revisit the issue? Could I ask you to not vote tonight to build a building until we've paid for this one? That is not something that is on the table for this is not something we are gonna to consider tonight unless somebody makes a motion to table to that effect. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay, there's a motion in the second to build a, a community center, not knowing what size or what it's going to look like yet. Um, is, uh, I'm going to call the question. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Okay, five and oh. We're, we're building it. Now, we have four options and four and a half options on the table. 
Um, can we do this by process of elimination? Does anybody want option one? No, Jim. I do. You do? I do. Okay. I option do as one? well. Two, op two for no, Jim. That's it. Okay. Um, all right. Do you want to speak to it? Please. Okay. I, I'd like to speak to it. So looking at the different cost options that we have with the various gen with, with or without gyms, we see the estimated cost recovery percentages are not going to pay off any of these buildings. <laughs> Revenue that we make off of the programs will never pay off any of these buildings for over 100 years. So to me, it seems to make the most sense to have the lowest cost facility that can house what we did before where we had all the programs we did before, but in a nicer facility. Uh, to me, it makes more sense to do it that way. When we looked at the market report that we received, it clearly stated that Doylestown Township has a reasonably small population base to support a community center. That means that our taxpayer money for anything over a small building is gonna be used for this to support programs for people that live outside the township. And although I do recognize that the greater community outside Doylestown Township, it's important to have facilities and things for them. I just don't see how we can justify spending a couple million dollars extra for those types of facilities. Okay. And, um, I do have a question. Uh, is Mr. Ballard still with us right now or has he dropped off the meeting? He's probably still on the call. Ken, are you still with us? Yes. Yes, I'm here. I, Mr. Ballard, I have a question for you uh, regarding the estimates for the, uh, the revenue uh, that our programs will bring in. Uh, were right. these estimates done assuming um, a high participation rate, like 100%? If we had all these programs, they would be completely filled? Or have we taken into account some of these programs will only have like five or six people out of 20 kind of thing right no we don't we don't uh, base uh, the revenue on the classes of being filled uh, we we base them on kind of about a 50 percent capacity um, on that so they're not been taken to the top on that so uh, we take a pretty conservative approach on this not knowing what the actual numbers will be so we don't take them all the way to the top so you'll find that some classes will perform better than what we have indicated. And, you know, most programs have a minimum number and we have that kind of at that or slightly above it. So um, there's not uh, a big risk there that uh, between all of those programs, I would fully expect that the numbers of people taking the programs and activities will be higher than what we've projected. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that That does give me a little more confidence in the the estimates but and I welcome uh, our architects to correct me if I'm wrong but just plugging in the numbers from the, the additional cost I'm taking the the cost of the base project no gym and then just figuring out the difference in cost between a small gym and a large gym and we know that the small gym in no way can pay for itself um, in fact might even be a detriment to the project having ongoing costs. Uh, with a large gym, it would take us, with the estimated revenue, about 30, 30 to 31 years to cover the gym. The hybrid would take us about 32 and a half years to cover the cost of the gym. And that's not taking into account uh, reflooring the gym as needed, additional maintenance costs, upgrades to the gym over the course of a 30 year life cycle. Um, so with, with those concerns, in addition to the already, we're talking for the hybrid, um, o over a million and a half, we're talking for the large gym, uh, 2.7 million. I, I have serious concerns about that, especially when we factor in our other costs that we have, um, including uh, the other possible amenities we discussed in our last budget meeting for the park, and as well as our roads program. So um, that's my concern with having the additional gyms and the additional costs added to the project. Okay, um, that's option one. Anybody else want to speak to option one? I have, I have one more thing I would, I would like to add. I was involved as liaison for Parks and Rec at the very beginning when we started doing an analysis of the community center. Parks and Rec spent hundreds of hours on looking at, at this building, this, the concept of the building. and. Um, 
and it was interesting to see how it evolved. This is four years evolving uh, between Parks and Rec, um, when I was liaison, when I'm the liaison for Ways and Means, they, they cooperated, they had a subcommittee that worked together um, to try and find out the best option for our community. And in that process, it was, it was fascinating to me that this smaller building was really the initial concept. The gym came later. The gym came when we said, this is gonna cost us money and we need to recover some of that, so we're gonna put a gym in. So that became, that became an important part of it. That was part of the evolution of even in considering a gym. Now we look at the, the financial information in front of us and it's, it really is not gonna come to, based on the analysis that you've provided, it is not gonna be paying off anything. So it is just an additional cost that will not, do the, not, not benefit our community in a way that we actually anticipated. So for me, it feels like we're trying to force the gym into it because we liked the idea. We liked helping out um, the sports communities. Um, and I just don't see that as our responsibility as a township. And I don't see that as a responsible way to spend taxpayer money. Okay, Nancy, you wanna to speak to option one? I'm sure. Um, I am pro gym 100%. Um, part of that is, Jen, um, when I looked at our pros plan and I looked at all the programs we currently offer, one of the things we talked about is we didn't have team programs. You have a gym, you have an opportunity for those drop-in opportunities. It's not meant to be a complete workhorse and take care of the other leagues. There's a mental health piece of, and a physical piece to the gym that I'm also looking at. So there's parts of that you can't put a price on. Um, there's also adult leagues and opportunities um, that we provide uh, multi-generational opportunities. So when I'm looking at that gym piece, I'm also looking at holistically, not just a dollar sign, because I think Karen has spent mo lots of time explaining from cradle to grave, and I think we need to be mindful of that when making that decision, and not just like one element of the um, planning process and the decision making. Well, while I understand that, I also have to say, I don't believe the gym is gonna solve our, any teen issues. There are plenty of teenagers that aren't gonna go to, draw, to play some basketball, or uh, I, I think we can have programs that support teens. We can have study groups, we can have, um, we can have all sorts of things, work with nonprofits, volunteer opportunities. Uh, we have outdoor leagues. The, the analysis that we did, the market analysis, said that a lot of the sports that the kids wanted to play are things like football, things that are utilizing our fields, not a gym. And as far as older people, a lot of the, the same analysis that we looked at, older people want to do things like walk or even the arts. The arts was a huge uh, area of growth for uh, the people in our community. So I just think we're trying to shoehorn this gym into being all the, the, to, to support teens when we can do that in other ways, to support seniors where we can do that in other ways as well. well I, can, I can we hear that. from Ryan first? Oh, sure. yeah, I just want, I think it's important to note that we did do um, several meetings with residents, with uh, different groups, community groups within the township, and overwhelmingly, they would have taken a gym over any meeting room. So I think that's very important to consider that the number one thing that came out of all of those meetings, so if we're looking for like what the township residents were looking for, it was a gym. Absolutely. So that, that for me was not surprising. And I think, you know, this idea of replacing what we had, and Jen, I, I was 100% in, lined up with you and Dan and this idea of like, let's just replace what we had, right? And, and be able to offer what we were previously offering. I think the needs of our community have changed. Um, and I think we were on the way out from what we were offering. And I think we're in a, and we have to look forward as opposed to like, let's just do what we were doing before. So I just, I just wanted to make that point as we kind of talk through this, that the overwhelming response from all of these um, meetings that we held and it was, these were township groups, township residents was the gym. So that's why um, I think it's important that we, if we're looking at this, listen, it, it gets to a point, if we're looking at 
and and I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to challenge these numbers, but but some of it is you know the recovery for the gym. I actually think you know what Dan thinks maybe some things are overinflated. I think they're underinflated for the opportunities we could have for what we could do with this gym in revenue recovery. And um, I had another point, but I forgot it. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I have to say that as far as revenue recovery, we did look at other facilities that had, had gyms and they didn't have that high of a recovery. So I understand, I mean, I was, we flip flopped, I think, because before I was very pro gym when it was a $4 million project. But when it doubled in cost, you're saying yeah, no, it was never a four million dollar project. We we started at three, then it went to four, and then it went higher. Not since these folks have been involved. That's the, right, the real right. numbers. Okay. So, and and as far as the community wanting the gym, yeah, I can I could see that 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 there's would be some some interest in having the gym. I was there. I went to I went to practically all the meetings, if not all the meetings. Um, but again do they want it bad enough to spend an extra couple million dollars on it? That's the question. Well, instead of roads, instead, just, instead of just, other this priorities. Is, just looking between option one and option two, it's not a million dollars, it's 500,000. Well, option two doesn't even pay for itself and it's a small gym. Well, nothing's gonna pay for itself. No, 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 but it's, it's even worse as far as cost recovery, right? It's Nothing's going to pay for itself. No, absolutely. But none of these are going to pay for themselves over. Exactly. I know, hundreds of a hundred years, if not more. But the small gym. They would depreciate before they would ever pay. For it. Exactly. Um, can I hear from? Can we hear from anybody out there? Anyone have any comments, Brenda Bray? Good evening. Brenda Bray, and I do have uh, some questions. Of course, um, being on the Ways and Means Committee, I'm quite interested in knowing the assumptions that are used to put together the cost, uh, not only of construction, but as well as the cost recovery. Um, I'm wondering when that information will be shared, the assumptions uh, in general for cost, <laughs> revenue, and then I'm also quite interested because of years of involvement in building large buildings and lead projects, what the cost is for all the lead. I'm not saying that being green is not important, it certainly is. But I also know from years of experience that each one of those things that you had listed in here from a rooftop garden on down are quite expensive, not only to build initially, but to maintain. Is there any way that we can get some of that information to do an analysis? Sure. Yes. And Mr. Ballard, I don't know if he wants to address anything. He's on, he's on there you. as well. But. He provided us with, um, late today, um, his op analysis and assumptions. Would you like to take a look at it? Um, if, it's, if it's a <laughs> no, link. I think that was similarly handed out. I think we reviewed that you got in this? June. Um, they haven't changed since June. June. Yeah. yeah. I think they just updated them with the fourth but, option. Well, the option or what we saw earlier was fairly generic. I was hoping mm -hmm. for more depth. Uh, I am a CPA. I love numbers and I love mm -hmm. to look at things. But again, I don't think that I also addressed the cost related to um, things such as parking. We haven't, I haven't heard really anything about parking. And when we were talking about uh, that early on, I mean really early, like four years ago, uh, that was a big deal about needing more parking spaces. Um, and so there's just some things that I think that are missing so far tonight. And I'd like to hear some of those answers or at least see some numbers too. Thank you. I don't know how to address that question. Do you want um, me to? Can you help, um, Ken or? Can I? Or can I ask a couple? Can sure. we go? No, let's, no, let's, let's stay on, okay. on point here. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to answer the questions that we can and then Ken can address the other ones. So, um, so on the lead component, the goal of incorporating lead is to, first of all, not actually do the entire certification process because that is very expensive. And most of our clients are not really interested in spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to just get the paper on the wall that says we're LEED certified. What we're looking to do is no or low cost options. So when Megan presented the LEED lists, you can, um, if we if I'd go back, just to clarify, we weren't saying we would do all of them, but those were all of the options that could be done 
but we were just checking off the ones that we felt were appropriate for this project and wouldn't add costs. So, for example, when you said the green roof, there is no green roof on this building, that is a lead a point that you could, but we're not doing that here. Um, as far, so is that, does that answer your question as far as lead is concerned? Yes? I think you opened up some more questions. I'm, I'm happy to talk about the operations plan and what went into developing those options, if you'd like. Certainly, but I, I didn't hear you. Going back to lead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it, it would be helpful to know what options you are going to put in, having mm -hmm. had experience. And what I just heard you say is that you're not looking for uh, silver or gold or any sort of particular um, plaque to hang on the wall. You just are looking at a few specific features? Yes. Lead? Yeah, I'm glad to go back and share those with you again. Uh, there are six, the six categories. There right. are options that we can take in each of those categories that are low or no cost options. For example, the bike racks, the showers, I mean, those things are, are automatic. Right. So we don't anticipate that the green features would add cost to this project because we know that there's a budget to Okay. Maintain. Right. Okay. That's so, so that's the first thing. I can answer the, the cost. Um, you asked about the cost estimating where we're getting our numbers. Ryan, do you want to speak to that? Or do you want me to address that? And either one of us really can. But... So when we started the cost estimating exercise, <laughs> um, we polled a lot of construction managers, general contractors in the area, and we came up with a number of $250 a square foot. Um, the numbers that you do, okay, well, and then we do provide uh, total project costs, so we did ask, we did put together site costs, um, you know, printing costs, everything that would take to, for the construction project. It was closer to three or four hundred dollars a square foot, right, at the end? That's correct, but the construction the construction budget was $250 a square foot. Total project cost is going to be more than that. And that included fit outs and fittings and so on, furniture Correct. fittings. Appliances, fit yeah. everything, furniture. Yeah. So just for clarification for the sustainability, the items that you had checked off, the easy things, the fact that we're going to be putting it on, we are already planning on putting it on a tennis court. You know, it, it's, it's all the stuff that, I understand it's, it's inexpensive, um, but I'm actually kind of shocked that we didn't look at doing more. Um, and those aren't, nothing's included in the cost aside from those, those checked items, right? I, I don't think it's necessary that we haven't looked at doing more, it's just we're like not at that level of detail. So it could be like material selection, obviously we're not, we're not like sourcing our materials yet so there's definitely an opportunity to do more of them right. as we get through the design process it was really just like a high level of like here's what you've already easily achieved mm -hmm. with where we're at right now okay okay um, comments from the uh, Kathy yeah I saw that yeah um, <clears throat> I just want to say I identify yourself. I'm sorry identify yourself please oh Kathy Brown chair of Park and Rec Board. Um, we've been working on this for years and years and years and years. And when we started working on this, I personally went to Montgomery Township and interviewed their um, director of their, their community center. We also, as a board, visited another um, community center as well. Every person said in building a community center if they could do one more thing it would be to build another gym mm -hmm. that that was the um now i'm not talking about costs i'm talking about that's what the people who had existing community buildings said if they could do anything it would be to add another gym something else that sort of hit me is that when I think of our park and rec, and this is the Doylestown Township Park and Rec Community Center, when I think of our park and rec department and what a phenomenal job they have done, I also bet 
that when you hear the words park and rec, you think outdoors. You think what? Outdoor. Oh, outdoor. And we as a township who pride ourselves in being progressive and embracing the future, um, let's embrace the future. And as Ryan, you may have said, and I can't remember, our community is changing, and let's provide for our community in um, providing a gym and providing that indoor space to allow those of us who are aging um, room to maintain our activity and um, whether it be physical activity, mental, social, whatever. So that's where a gym is very important as a part of this community center. That's it. Thank you, Kathy. Um, somebody else had a comment? Mr. Wallace there? Yeah, hi, Jim Baldessari, and I am on the uh, EAC as well. So I just wanted to say, first of all, that I, I really appreciate the thought that's gone into sustainability for this building. I think you're hitting all the right, the right notes. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we, that we put in here are um, extremely cost effective. So they are things which at almost no cost uh, to, the, to the initial building, but actually pay back over time. And I think you've alluded to that already. So the orientation of the building relative to the sun is very important. Um, the closer to south, the better, and you're, you're almost there. I'd also like you to consider um, where the placement of trees would occur in the future so that we could have deciduous trees to the west, shade on the building in the summer, and then you know uh, evergreen trees to the north to provide wind blocks. So those are the kind of things which really add no cost to the building and make a lot of sense. The overhangs are make uh, a lot of sense as well. Uh, you mentioned HVAC, um, and I'm not an expert in that, but um, I'd be curious to see what you want to say about that as well. Um, but other simpler things, um, like the, the, the color of the roof, for example, a cool roof, a reflective roof, can reduce the, the cost of cooling the building by something like 10 or 15 percent. That's every year for the lifespan of this building. So, you know, a green roof might be more than we want to do, but the color of the roof is, I think, is extremely important. So, um, I just want to say that I, I think you're hitting all the right notes, and I'd like to see more about where you want to go with this, but um, many of these things, in fact, are, are very cost effective. Um, and the other thing I would mention is, um, I know solar will be another big decision we'll have to make, but um, if we decide not to go with solar at this point, at least that we would uh, build in the infrastructure to, to uh, enable solar perhaps in the future, right? Save that cost in the future. So um, I'll be back actually, hopefully in the near future, to talk to the board about why I think solar is actually going to be a money maker for the, for the township. Mr. Uh, Baldessari, I have a question. Um, I, I don't know that much about solar and, and the process of putting it on roofs. I'm hoping that maybe I can help get some information from you. This looks like a metal roof. Is that a common? Can you put solar panels easily on it? I, I, can believe, you can, I believe you can. Okay. Yes, I don't think that. We, we'll have to talk to a designer, but I, I don't think that's a problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, other comments from John? Did I see you? Hey, my name is John Bray. Um, I am a recently retired design professional. I've worked with Sylvia before. Hi, Sylvia. And, and with Ken. Hi, Ken. Um, I spent about 20 years on the Park and Recreation Board. Uh, not on the board anymore, but I was on the board when we did, did a lot of uh, the study uh, for the building. And uh, I really can't imagine building it without a gymnasium. Uh, I'm certainly not here to second guess Ken's work, but I, I strongly suspect that, um, that if properly promoted, uh, the gymnasium or gymnasia, gymnasiums or, uh, uh, would, uh, would definitely generate a lot more revenue than I, I think we, we can imagine at, at this point. Um, I'm disappointed in the cost, <laughs> like everybody is. I'm really torn about where to put it. Uh, I know that we spent an awful lot of time looking at different uh, sites in Central Park. I recognize the benefits of putting it close to here, close to administration, close to the police department where it could be watched. There are major benefits there. I also recognize the benefits of putting it elsewhere in the park where we can maybe utilize our real estate a little bit more efficiently. I am concerned about parking, uh, parking uh, around uh, this building. It's already tough. Uh, I haven't really heard anything this evening uh, about how we could fix that if we were to build a building here. I'm disappointed that we can't come up with a different solution 
uh, than uh, eliminating field one. Um, fields are very, very difficult to come by. We, uh, we were very fortunate in gaining a couple of fields over off New Britain Road. That was a, sort of a godsend. Um, and uh, it seems like as hard as we fight for fields, it's, uh, it's tough to lose one. So I also don't have any better ideas on where to put uh, the courts. I mean, there, there really are only so many places. And those are also things that we want up front and center so that they can be watched by the police and, and by staff. Um, so I, I don't know if, uh, if there are any innovative ways to, to augment our parking, but I think that having some sort of a parking solution should be part of the decision to put the building near here. Um, let's see, back, um, back to the, um, the cost. Um, just so Sylvia knows, our, maybe you saw it, our earliest concept that we used just to sort of kick around and see if we really wanted to do this included about a 12,000 square foot building. Uh, it was a pre-engineered <coughs> building, uh, but we had our program space on two floors uh, with an elevator and some steps. Um, I don't know if a solution along that line would help cut the cost. I know it makes it tough to break up that elevation uh, and make it uh, attractive. Um, but that's why God made architects. I mean, I know, you're, I know you'd be up to that challenge if you thought that uh, the idea uh, had any merit. Um, and those are my comments. Thank you very Thanks, much. John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Hi, Paul Donello from the Park and Rec Board. So I'm, like Kathy and John, I've been working on this for quite some time. And I just wanted to say, <clears throat> there was a comment earlier, I think it was Jen, that this, we originally didn't start talking about a gym, um, but really we did. Uh, it started all when the building was gonna be built on New Britain Road, 5,000 square foot building, and we looked at the cost and we said, maybe we can look at this and do better. And we started <coughs> to talk about it then. And almost instantly, we went to, let's try and do a gym. So it, that's been talked about by the Park and Rec Board for four or five years at least. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank just you. To, just to clarify, the <clears throat> building, the park and rec facility that was supposed to be built during when this building was built didn't have a gym. Yes, so I that's, agree. That's what I was park referring and rec to. Got involved, that's what I was referring to. Okay, but when park and rec got involved, we said we would like to try to build a gym. We think the community needs it. We looked at it. That's what we came up okay. with. So, thank you. Okay. Um, got one more. Oh, sorry. How are you doing? Brian Loftus. Um, my, my comment and concern is really about the outdoor courts currently uh, and the modulars that have been on there for about six years. It didn't look like there's a lot of office space in any of the renderings. Um, with the, the, the folks or departments in the, um, in the current modulars, where would they be then moved to? We, we have no one in the modulars anymore. We, were, we were, had our offices in the modulars when we were having this building built. Yeah. So all of the office space has moved in here. However, we retain the modulars to continue to have indoor recreation space. And that is where currently our Parks and Recreation Department is holding a variety of programs and events and things in that space. Okay, so they will be moved. That goes that away point. when that we get That goes away when the building They're comes being used to yeah. do all the, this okay. stuff. Okay. One at a time. Sorry. <laughs> no, that, that answered my question. Um, because I think outdoor courts are, are really imperative here. And so just, I didn't want that to get lost in the shuffle that they would then be moved. And I understand Mr. Bray's comment about having to lose a field because of that. But I think the outdoor courts are, are very important. Yeah, I think the first or second slide showed the location of the courts if we move them to field one. And it's a shame that we would lose field one, but we're hoping to pick up more fields elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. That was all. It's, it's always possible. Large gym, large gym. Large gym for you. <laughs> Sir. One large gym, one vote for a large gym. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments regarding option one? Okay. I think everybody spoke in the room. All right. So um, is there a motion to uh, approve um, option one? Bonham, somebody make that motion? I'll make the, the motion to approve option one for our community center. And Dan, you're going to second that? or? Just to be perfectly clear, option one is no gym, correct? Correct. Okay. Yes, I will second that. Okay. Call on the question. All in favor of option one? Aye. 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 Nay, nay. Option one fails. Option two. Option two is the small gym. All right, let me, let me do it. Let's, 
Option two is a small gym. Anyone for option three, the big gym? You mean option 2.5 or option three? three. Well, how about we do this as opposed to go, I'm for option 2.5. I okay. think I'm not for option two because I don't like seeing a negative in the estimated recovery. Um, and I think that again, if we're talking about moving forward, if we're talking about looking forward into the future and the needs of our township residents, this is, this kind of marries the two with this, you know, cutting down on the meeting space, but also having a, um, also having a gym um, that frankly, let's not forget, the gym is a large room. Uh, so when we talk about like what a meeting room can do versus what a gym can do, if a gym's open, it can cover the same functionalities that a meeting room can do. But the gym offers the fact that it's a gym. So um, I am in favor of, of option 2.5 the hybrid. Okay, this is my question. I'm going to just, because I, I have a list, Brian knows, and some of them are really specific, but can I need a, an explanation of what's the difference between the multi-use room three, which basically has 200 occupants, and it looks like it can be divided into three spaces, correct? And then there's the other multi-use room one and two, which are those two separate rooms, or is it one gi giant room that can be divided into two? It's one room divided that can be divided into two. Okay, so the only option, or the 2.75 that we didn't talk <laughs> about. <laughs> no, 2.75 is the a large gym and the large multi-use room. No. That's, that's the point. only one we didn't, uh, I'm just throwing that, that out was there. one of your ideas. I don't think it ever got translated into an option. Exactly, because... When Karen talks about her planning and moving, be able to move people around, that sort of covers everybody in terms of three areas for planning and the large gym. I, I and think, then I think we're scaling, so, scaling all right, down. So now. if I'm, I'm going to back that off, then I like the 2.5 as well with the large gym. That's where I would fall, but I want the patio. And that's, that's where... The patio is just an overhang. I don't think that's a... I, well, mean, I would be in favor of doing that, too, for, again, all okay, of Okay, that's an optional piece. Okay, so the patio is optional. And then the other piece of that I'm just going to ask is, when you lay it out, is there a reason the patio is facing the... Like, the, the view isn't so hot? Could it be on the other side near the fields? And where that open space is, could that be park, more parking? So... I know park, parking is a huge issue for me. I mean, our Park and Rec this year has done some really awesome concerts, and we've opened up a beer and wine garden, so please come out. Um, and when they do come out, like, you can see what that's creating. So mm -hmm. we, got, we really have to be mindful of those things. So that was one mm -hmm. of my questions. I think that's a great question and a great suggestion. Um, we could easily move the parts and pieces of this building around. I think. Overall, the goal of the feasibility study was to get the right number of spaces, the right square footage, all of those things so that we could get a cost estimate and try to, to move it forward. But we're going to be having, if this project moves forward, a lot more detailed meetings where things like what you suggested will be addressed and reviewed and incorporated. But I think that's a, a really good idea. And so if we talk about the large gym, mm -hmm. it's not just an additional volleyball court. So if we talk out the smaller gym versus the larger gym. The larger gym then has spectator space because when I look at this visual, yep. and I'm a pretty visual person, uh -huh. right? If you have a smaller gym or the, there's no place for parents to watch their kids. There's, there's, there's no standing on the sidelines. There's barely benches for That's the teams. correct. Is that correct? That's yes. correct. So if you think about that, right? You're sending your kid in, good luck. You've got a kid with anxiety your parent can't be in there with that child. So, mm. you know, we really need to think about that when you're talking about the large gym. And if we're going to do it, do it so that it can be used by everybody. So, because people do sports not because they're going pro, even though a lot of people in Doylestown think they are. There's a lot of emotional health to that piece. It creates confidence. It creates connectivity. It creates um, leadership skills. So when I think about this community rec center, those are the things I'm thinking about holistically. So the larger gym and that um, medium space is, is where I lean as well. 
okay. at the end of the day. And I have lots of other comments about. Okay. But that's um, another day. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just, can, can you clarify in the visuals what is 2.5 that Ryan's? Is Do you it, see? So look at it two it's, with the larger gym. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Do you see how it? Do you see the dotted line there, up there? Do you see how it says small gym, large yeah, gym? Yes, so it's so the larger two, gym. It's the larger gym, and then it's an additional cost of 444000 from the uh, total cost that's there. Thank you. Yeah, so, op so just for clarification, option two, point, option 2 is $6 million. Option 2.5 is 6.4. Okay. Um, anybody have anybody out there have any comments about option 2.5 larger gym anybody for against so I, I, I'd be interested in that option in hearing is if it's possible what Karen would say with the smaller meeting rooms that would be my concern there on 2.5 Karen do you want to speak to that are they smaller meeting rooms are smaller multi-purpose rooms can you hear me yes while it's a large space and it can be broken down, it does uh, compete at some level with rentals versus programs simultaneously. So that would be my concern. It's very similar to what we had in the past. So that they, they would be my only concern. And, and just so we're clear, the estimated recovery would not increase with the gym size, I assume? It would increase to 104. It's at 90. Oh, that was on the other sheet. Okay. Yeah, so option two is um, 98%. Right. Option 2.5 would bring it to 104%. Okay, thank you. <coughs> well, the hybrid option with a large gym would just be option three. <laughs> so. Oh, no. I know it gets confusing. That's why we wanted to make sure that there were... The 2.5 is a large gym as well? Yeah, so, but option three is just option four, essentially, with a smaller gym. Well, Paul makes a good point. With option 2.5, you're losing some... Well, you, you don't have as much multi-use space regardless in option two. But you can also use the gym use now the gym. as another space. But what Karen says is going to be competing with program space, right? Mm -hmm. When you have the gym in use, you're going to have less program space. Just saying. One potential option, just throwing it out, we can talk about in design. If we go this route, the YMCA used to have that big divider that goes across their gym. You get gym and program space. Just, you know, plain devil's advocate. I mean, I would think no matter what gym we use, there should be dividers. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you know, I, I think that would be, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I would think we would, we would definitely want to use dividers for sure. Okay. Where are we? So, uh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll entertain a motion for option 2.5 with the caveat being, you know, we, we, it's not option 2.5 as it rests. Option 2.5 with the outdoor um, overhang porch, however we want to couch it, but in concept, not in um, absolute in terms of the positioning of everything. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, you know, taking into consideration Mr. Bodasano's uh, comments around how, what faces which way for, um, energy efficiency and all of those those things so I'll, I'll entertain that motion for option 2.5 is there a second I'll second that option okay can I just have a question for Karen before we call the question Karen um, if you had your druthers would you rather have more multi-use space or a gym and less multi-use space I think it's all about balance and the delivery of service um, in listening to everybody's comments my my coming into this and looking at it and then looking at the expansion cost that's what scared me of, of is considering future expansion and how much more that increases the project so my first lean hearing what everybody's had to say and sitting in all these meetings would be option four um, but in listening tonight now, I would ask the question, or pose the question of if you were leaning towards 2.5,
could there be consideration of one room? So if you look to the right where we have the multi-use with a split space, at least one space on that other side and then the patio. Can you, uh, can you, can you repeat pull that? that down? You're just a little <laughs> muffled, I'm sorry, Karen. So on option, if you look at option four, where the, or most of them were the multi-use multi space on the right is a double space. Mm -hmm. I would say if we were going to seriously look at option 2.5, if that's the board's um, druthers to do that, I would ask that consideration be given to at least one of those spaces to the right. So that if you had a large rental for some reason, you could still hold program in that at least the one space that then could lead to the patio or the patio could lead from the larger space. So would that be 2.75 with the three spaces <laughs> and the gym? The that makes space. sense, Sylvia. Wait, wait, wait. We don't wait. have that costed out. We don't have that, number one, we don't have that diagram. We don't have it costed out. Do you understand what she's asking, Sylvia? Yeah. yeah. Is, is that possible? And, but, and the, then it's, and the expense would be another half million, probably? Yeah, I mean, the square footage, individual square footage of each room. I think they're like 1,500 square feet each. Four. It's on the, it's on that diagram there. Yeah, yeah. there we're, we're looking put. at $7.8 million <clears throat> to option. do that Order four. rather than just the whole large gym, which is or, another or option four, right? Yeah. Not doing option which four. is a small gym, right? So if we're looking I think in the delivery of services, oh, we have to look at the balance to the whole community okay, so and the interest in the community. And I think somebody said tonight about having, having vision forward to as our community changes and grows. <laughs> well, that's all, you know, we've got a motion for option 2.5 on the board on the, on, in, in consideration in a second. Um, Karen, I respect what you're saying and I, and I really appreciate that we should have more multi-use space. And I'm a little reluctant to vote for a, um, an, an option that doesn't have what you're gonna need. Am I getting that right? Yes. We're, this, this option 2.5 is not useful to you. Is, this, is that what I'm hearing? We can make anything work but it's very similar to what we came from from what we used to call the red building a one space that we juggle while it may be dividable we're still juggling between rental uses program uses are we having programs are we pulling programs back for rentals are we not running programs to allow rentals in vice versa it gets a little more complicated in programming and planning than it seems on the surface karen my question is this, with COVID, um, obviously we don't really know to some extent what's gonna happen with our programs, where people's heads are at. Is that a fair thing to say? I mean, we're you're still figuring, I mean, everyone's figuring it out, what people are comfortable with, what trends are gonna change, how things are gonna move forward, is that correct? I think it is correct. Um, there's obviously, there's a, a part of virtual programming that will never go away, people like it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also a lot of hybrid programming that we can do. Park and Rec work tirelessly through the whole COVID scenario, all of us collectively across the state. And um, we know that Park and Rec has been rediscovered and you can tell by the numbers coming out. We're working very hard uh, from the loss of space to rebuild our program base and, and create and grow programs. And the numbers, I believe, are climbing at this point. Awesome. Um if the board commits to finding you a space, um, that extra space. No, there's not, this is, we have to vote on one of these plans or none of them. Um, let me just finish my thought. Okay. So one of my thoughts has always been, because I do think with programs, as Karen and I have discussed, that there's an ebb and flow. There are things that are hot, then things are done. There's certain seasonal things that are more, I mean, if you look at our numbers in the pros plan, you can see the, the up and down of the numbers. Fair? fair? Uh, it is fair, however, I also like to caution that when we undertook the pros plans, it was also in conjunction with the loss of space. Well, the I went all the way back very quickly, um, but we are definitely on the upswing. And Un understood, but the numbers in, in the pros plan start from 2013, before this building started. M my point is this, that we have pavilions that we use that maybe we could enclose that, you know, with garage doors, that there's maybe other creative ways create um, experiences 
um, and, and, and enhancements to our parks that our park and rec talk about. Um, and I don't want to shortchange your programs because I appreciate what you offer and your passion and um, you're always trying to push the envelope with new ideas. Um, so having that large gym, you didn't have that space for programming versus you would have the large gym plus those two extra spaces. Could there be times when you have to push and shove? Yes. But would the 2.5 work as that extra programming space maybe? I don't know. Uh, I think the gym is a different kind of programming space. Yes, you can do a lot of things in there, and we would certainly, as you can see on that chart that we developed, we, I, we didn't leave it to just athletics. However, mm -hmm. we don't have to be cognizant when we did that, and I put all that in. I want to be cognizant of the fact of if the athletics do come in and we do have the rental, that's going to eat up a lot of time and space, which is a good thing. That's, that's not a bad thing by any, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, through that exercise, it, you know, everything that could possibly go in there. And I do want to mention that all of those activities, whether they came from our base or another, they all came from park and recreation programs at community center. So none of that is just pie in the sky made up, but they would all be aspirations that we would be looking across the ages and to the underserved populations, which are identified in the program and that pros plan. Anybody else want to speak to the question? I do. Uh, can you just clarify on the plans, the vertical, I guess, or the horizontal um, rectangle? Is that a basketball court? The one that's in the orange area? In For the, the gymnasium? gymnasium? So the largest outline is the basketball court. The okay. The most is volleyball, and then the three vertical ones are pickleball. Okay, so I was just trying to orient what the gym would offer in terms of recreation in the specific gym for each one. So thank you. Sorry, yeah, the large. Sorry, just to clarify, in the, in the large gym, there's two volleyball courts. In the small gym, there's only one. Just to clarify. Uh, Nancy, to, to your point, as far as programming, programming, it was my understanding that part of building this community center was was space for the community as well. So it's not just programming, it's also if, if the big space is utilized for programming, there's then... Right. So uh, just... Listen, I, I mean, here, here's where I am. If, if we had all the money, in the, like option four is the best option, it hits all the buckets for what we need, but I think it, what we have to really look at is listening to residents that don't see a need for it at all and balancing that with what we can do and, and taking all of those pieces. So, you know, overwhelmingly the people that are in this audience tonight, along with, again, the, the <coughs> meetings that we have had said, Jim, Jim, Jim. Okay, so if, if it's Jim, 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 you know, I think people have short memories of what was there before and the meeting space that was provided. So, okay. We know that that's important, so we want to bring that back. So what's, you know, I'm trying to find, like, what's that balance where what's we... The, we the middle it's not, no, Nothing's going to be perfect unless we go with option four. If we go with option four, it's not fiscally responsible, right? Yeah. And so, or option, or option three. three. Yes, it's yes. not fiscally responsible. Yeah. So, so I'm, I don't think any of us are going to walk away feeling like, yes, this we've, we've hit every button we want to, but, you know, that's the hard choices that we have to make versus, you know, being fiscally responsible and also meeting the needs of what we're trying to accomplish. And when I say meeting the needs, it's meeting the needs. It's not saying we're going to be able to do everything we want to do. So, obviously. Okay. And I was going to say the programs don't need to compete with the gym. You adjust your programs based on your space, which you always have done anyway. So, it's just a little bit of, it's about shifting. Like, you know, it's a different fit for what we're offering the community. It's never a competition between the spaces. They're two very different spaces with some crossover, absolutely, and it could be planned that way. It takes a lot of careful planning and just and bobbing and weaving, uh, but they are complementary to each other. They do not conflict with each other. Just 
One other question. This is a large space, and I know it wouldn't be suitable for all types of programming. What's the utilization of this space? I mean, hopefully, mm -hmm. I know it's more than just exactly. board meetings, but this space could satisfy some of the programming needs for a smaller area. Yeah. They, I agree. Which we talked about before in Park. Great. Right. Yeah. Karen, you, you utilize this space for some of your programming already, correct? We do uh, utilize this space when available for, I'm going to call for lack of a better term right now, for some, some clean, less messy type programs. Um, we do have um, some programs coming up that we've actually tried to put in here and they've now gotten bumped because of various meetings. So that's, that's the conflict. This is a meeting area first and that would be a recreation area first. Obviously still able to be interchangeable for, for meetings if need be. If there's a larger space, you have a larger meeting. We've done that in the past. So uh, scheduling can be uh, problematic at times, but yes, we do do it in that. Thank you, it's a good point. Karen, um, the multi-use space that's shown on option two, is that sufficient for the programs you have now and for expansion, if you can tell? Is the space? Yes, the multi-use space shown on option two is sufficient. Two. For, for program you have now and yeah. possible and, expansion. And expansion. Uh, within that space. That's, yes. That's my clarification. Yes, within that space. Um, and it's hard to, I'm sure. Yeah, we'd often have to break it down into multiple spaces. Again, the conflict would come with the rentals, and we know from past experience that there are people interested in rentals. Is it doable? It is doable. We'll make, we'll make it doable. I mean, it's, it's really not whether it is. We will. Like Ryan said, um, there is no perfect answer here, and, you know, the consideration would be, as it shows, can there be future expansion? It's the price of that that scares me. Uh, I don't know. Well, yeah, there can be future expansion with this option too, right? It shows future expansion. It says it right there. Yep. yep. Okay. So, um, any other comments with regard to the question on the table, option two point five? John. I have to say that of all of the options, I think 2.5 represents the best solution based on my understanding while I was on the park board while we were studying this. So I would Thank encourage you, John. you to go with 2.5. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Anybody else? May, Anybody may else I make a clarification? 2.5, um, if I understood that correctly, we, we will be in, we're planning to incorporate the patio. Correct. Yes. In and of itself can be. Yes, incorporated. the motion is for 2.5 with the covered outdoor space. Okay, does everyone understand the motion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Nay. Nay. Okay, motion carries 2.5, it is. Whew. Thank you, everybody. With the patio. With the patio. <laughs> All right, what else do we have to decide tonight? Do we still have to vote on where it's going? What? Oh, yeah. Voting on where it's going, where it's officially. Going. Where it's going. Oh, yeah, where is it going? Motion to... Um, I'll make a motion. And, and w w actually, before I make that motion, I'd love for, because I think it's important that we've had discussions around, um, and you've made mention of it tonight, Barb, the addition of uh, outdoor um, fields. Yes. Could you speak to that a little bit more, just so you know people have an understanding of, of what's going on there? And we've talked about... Moving the court, you mean, or not moving the courts, but we've talked about the possibility of being able to acquire new some new fields, right? Yeah, but I can't speak to that yet. Okay, still you can't speak to it yet. Okay, so we can't speak to that yet, but it's speculative. Again, I'll I'll make the motion for the um, proposed community center to be located. Um, I guess on you know in this the courts. At the, courts. At the courts, yes, at the Court courts, um, with the same understanding of what we just voted on. There is no perfect solution to this, um, wh where there, it's going to be, but I think it makes the most sense. Um, and we have, you, you see two options. We've painstakingly talked about 20 more, right? And so this has been a long process, and I think that this makes the most sense for, for what we're trying to accomplish. So I'll make that motion for the proposed community center to go on the courts field, or where the courts are. All right, is there a second to the motion? I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, five now. Okay, um, is that it? I think that, are we done? Do you guys have to say anything more? 
We're good. Do you have anything more to We're say? We're already designing. I have a question. Are you like exhausted too? We're moving on to 2.5 already. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a question. I have a couple questions and I know it's like the next. Yeah, let's do it the next. Yeah, okay. But like in terms of cost savings, like toilet room individual versus group, some of those things, will they be presented? I mean, are there opportunities for cost savings doing it that way? Um, so your, your question is, is it more cost effective to do a gang toilet versus an individual? Yeah, I think you have six individuals. So to, to be honest, um, six individual toilet rooms takes up less square footage than six gang toilet rooms. Okay. So you're actually saving on construction costs per square foot. So it actually becomes cheaper. So what about you know, handicapped in that mix? What um, about what? So handicapped. I'm just curious. So they're slightly bigger, but not not substantially enough to make a difference. We'd have the. Curtain. So they're in that in that estimate. Okay. Yeah. And then, just the kitchen. Yes. That is then a. Um, can you just define when you say you said warming and then you said catering, or somewhat catering. Can we, can we deal with these details another night, if you don't mind? These are planning details that I don't know that we need to do right now. We have a question in the audience. Jim? So if you're going with uh, option 2.5, which includes the future expansion gym, I would just ask you to think about shifting the multi-use room to the, to the right so that you could plant trees on the west of the building rather than on the east of the building. So. I think that's a great suggestion, especially if we're going to have the outdoor space on the west facade, because we don't want that to be you know, hot in the late afternoon. So, yeah. yep, good. And, and, and again, if we put trees over there in the summer, it'll be a nice, nice space. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Good. Anybody else? Is that it? For the good of the order? Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Ken.